Fixing with Friends. I'm your host, that guy you know, and today we're doing something different for you guys. Hopefully it'll be interesting. It's going to be a bit of a series on its own. I will still intersperse videos of the work we've done already on other vehicles, just to keep it, uh, keep a variety going. So the whole premise of this is to to buy a car, a really cheap car, and to see how viable flipping cars is. I don't think that's something I will do in general, but it's a curiosity I've had. Now, how I came across this idea was a friend was looking for a car. As is often, they asked me a little bit. I help just to look because finding actual vehicles to sort through is is a huge part of finding a car and not everyone has time to do that so I was helping out with that uh, it, it's easier also when you have some idea of what to look for or what not to look for um, anyway so I came across this car and I know that the bottom value of the car is usually higher than this for a running car um, this car was running and driving, but it had some small problems. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll give you some hints. Guess down in the comments what you think the car is. So, rear-wheel drive, it has a base value. So basically, it, it's a fairly in-demand car. It has a value in the fact that it is that car. And that's not going to weigh anything, it will go up over time. It's manual. That doesn't really help you in this. It's green. No, I don't know. Let's just see what the car is. How's that sound? Are you ready? There it is. So, I'll take you around and introduce you to some. I hope you all know what this is. Yes, I bought a Mustang. It's a 1996 Ford Mustang with the SN95 body, which was based on the Fox body, but they made some improvements and it's a lot more rigid than the Fox body was. So let's take a look. Sorry guys, next time I should use my cell phone as a wider angle. All right, so let's take a look at the inside now. So good, so safe. I can't really show you, but the back seat is actually the best condition in here. It's not in very good shape, no, but it was only $800. And it comes complete with douchey stickers. The car has roughly 242,000 kilometers. So as you can see, a piece of the mirror is missing just there. I can only assume they removed the panel to wire them on. Um, on this side, door's crappy. Um, it's just dirty and disgusting in here. Some random cigarette paraphernalia. Whatever that is. Who knows? A mirror that looks like a dog was licking it and then they left it outside in the rain. I have no idea if this works. It's kind of a crappy deck though, so I doubt it. Yeah, the accessory is on. Um, Maybe someone who's used it knows which button I am depressed to try to turn it on. No, nothing. Okay. 
And a nice feature of these old cars is you have to take them up with two hands, basically, or weirdly with one. Because, you know, you don't want someone just stealing your key. Speaking of keys, that doesn't look right, does it? So the nice thing about having manual windows is they do still work. As you can see, only one headlight is functional right now. We've taken to calling it Cyclops. It seems fitting. It has one eye, it's green, and it's horrible. That's not supposed to happen. So as you can see here, there's one big rust spot. There are some smaller ones kind of just around the wheel wells in general, like down here. It's hard to see in this lighting, but the windshield is just a web of cracks. So the front bumper damage, it's a bit of a crack. Otherwise, it's mostly just scuffs. A little crack up there, but it's still quite secure. And a bit of a dent. It's really cold, that's probably normal. But as you can see, there's no latch mechanism. At least the metal part's still there. No spare tire or carpet. Yeah, that would definitely be why. I wonder if the guy who bought it before me pulled the subs out and sold them and then sold the car for the same price as he bought it for. Probably. If you take a look at the door... It moves a lot. Behold the majesty. I'm not going to start it up because it will probably suffocate me. Those familiar will notice this isn't a V8. This is actually a 3.8 liter SX V6 made in Canada. The engine itself is not great, but uh, the later ones actually were surprisingly reliable. Uh. Right there, now you can see the cobwebs. That's always a good sign. It shows you that people really took care of the motor. Something's missing. So, I think my biggest problem with the car are those rims. The kind of rims you'd expect to see on a car owned by a person who wears very baggy pants and a trucker hat with a flat brim. You know, one of the ones that someone didn't bother taking off the sticker when it was new. And wears it slightly askew. That's the kind of person who comes to mind when I look at this car. Yeah. Those are terrible. The only one good thing I can say about them is that they have a nice contrast with the black and polished surface. But otherwise... Uh, though I have to say, way better than if they're just some of those really chrome ones that are like 22 inches or something. Those look stupid on these cars. If that's your thing, that's fine. It's not my thing. You can do that to your car. Anyway, one of the other problems with this is the tires do not hold air. The front ones anyway, the rear ones are just fine. So the engine doesn't run great, but I'll start it up for you guys so you can listen to it and watch it shake. Um, I haven't 
really had a chance to look into what the problem is yet. Um, I'll be doing that. It was just really cold where I was. It's cold where I am now, but really cold where I was. Uh, and I didn't have a lot of opportunity while I was looking at the car. Um, the battery is good. That's a plus. Um, anyway, started up, let you listen to it, rev it a little bit. If that suits your fancy, you can listen to the strange noises it makes. making some weird crackling sounds. So I've just been going through making a list uh, of what's wrong with the car. through in the video and I've been kind of adding the price of how much each will, part will cost at the cheapest. Um, I may be able to buy like a door rather than just the panels and that might save me some money. Um, we'll see. Yeah, the list of things that are good is quite short. Uh, and maybe things that I'll be able to sell. The engine really depends on whether or not the engine is running. If it's not, probably only worth like a hundred bucks, if at all. Someone could probably just steal the block or the head. So yeah, that's the car. We're gonna be working on it over the next couple weeks. Maybe we'll see how it goes. I have no idea how long this will take. Um, but yeah our first project car for you guys, if that's going to become a thing or not. We do have, as I've mentioned previously, other projects down the line that uh, we have some pretty big plans for, but when we get those done, will depend entirely on how much we can afford at the time. Hopefully, if uh, this goes well, we'll end up making some more money for, uh, maybe, probably not a lot, but slowly build up some money for fixing with friends so we can get to the other projects that we want to get to and hopefully you'll enjoy them as well. Yeah, see you guys later. Alright, so that's the car. What do you guys think? Are you excited? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not anything amazing. I hope you weren't expecting anything amazing because this, we're not uh, some giant well-funded TV show. We just have the money that we're willing to throw out of our pockets and onto the ground and then burn because that's how this works. You can find cars that are really cheap. 
that are in great shape and you can just drive them as is and that's great. But they are very rare. Most of the cars you find for that price are going to be terrible. This is one of those cars. I did look around the car. It wasn't in fantastic shape. But it was it was in reclaimable shape from what I could see. And I do think that I paid too much for it. I found some issues after the fact that are more significant than I would have bothered with. Uh, or at the very least I would have talked down the price, but I didn't because... Largely because it was cold and I was okay with the price as it was. Um, but that, that's not a good thing. Never do that. Always push the price down to account for all of the issues with the car. That was just laziness on my part. And anyway, don't do that. So for this series, what I'm going to do is uh, find the problems that the car has, list them, and do a running total of all the repairs I do, um, and make sure that I go through the list of what it takes to pass the insurance inspections. And so the goal is to then get it to an insurable state and sell it. We'll see. I, it's, it's fairly... an insurance inspection is honestly probably not as substantial as it should be, but it can still, depending on the mechanic you take it to, be a very costly process because some mechanics will just fail it for things that aren't even on the checklist, which is not okay. So yes, so you can follow along with that uh, and uh, yeah, see, see how much money we throw into this pit and then light on fire and, and then die from the toxic smoke. All right, see you guys later. All right, see you guys later. Oh, wait. Lost a glove. The nice thing about having manual windows is they do still work. Yes, I can't find them.